Hey there, Henchling Overlords. This is Dan, and I wanted to go over a little bit of our card frames and the process that we use in Photoshop for actually laying out uh, new cards and just kind of show you guys a little bit of what we've done and maybe that could help you uh, if you're interested in exploring the possibility of making your own card game. So everything uh, about the, the card frame that's special here we've got over here in the layers panel. Um, we've got a guides option that shows us the manufacturer's uh, bleed and cut specifications. So this red line is, is the cut and uh, the blue line is the bleed uh, margin that they prefer. And so we just have that hidden by default, but the card frame has been tailored to be within uh, those parameters. Um, <clears throat> we have two layers here. This is actually a special layer for our specific manufacturer that converts the black into uh, the true black that they want for printing. Um, then when we were laying out the card, we determined that there were a variety of persistent elements uh, that would be present on all the different kinds of cards, uh, such as up here, the cost. Um, and you can see here, we can just toggle up the cost, turn it back down. Uh, then, of course, we have the assorted text uh, blocks. We've got the um, copyright information and the set name. Uh, we've got the artist credit here, uh, the title of the card, since every card will have a title and the generic function text. Now this uh, this type line here, this is actually on every card as well. However, it's stylized with colors specific to the card type. So we decided to put that inside the individual layer groups for each card type. So you can see here we have the five major card types, spells, hinchlings, items, traps, and enhancers and each of those has a different group so I can actually change carrier pigeon from a hinchling to a spell just like that or to an item and the reason that we wanted all this was because as we were manually laying out the cards uh, you know we just wanted one card template to share all of the important information that way everything stayed synchronized in terms of the card layout and so if we made any adjustments to you know, the edges or the borders or whatever else uh, that would carry through to all the different cards and all the different types. And we didn't have to worry about keeping different variants synchronized. So we'll just kind of go through the Hinchling um, itself. So the first thing we have is this banner here. This is a, a reaction symbol. We we'll just have that on a toggle. Now I highly recommend if you guys are using Photoshop for uh, layout like this really get into a habit of having good practices with layer groups um, having clean names and clean groups really helps a ton not just for you uh, to, to know and understand the organization but for anybody else who has to look at your uh, Photoshop files in the future so then we've got uh, the name box which is colorized specifically to the Hinchling type um, it's red here, you know, it would be green for items. Uh, the Hinchling logo here on the type line. Um, we have a, a, a little understroke here. Um, just a tiny little red line really helps kind of bring cohesion to the whole card color. Um, then down into the type line, you know, with the specific styling and the uh, kind of the red gradient effect there. And then we have some sort of different um, texturing for the background here. And I honestly, I actually don't even know quite how all this works because I'm sort of a Photoshop noob myself. Um, not, not much of a graphic designer, but really been working on, you know, doing all the layout and, and that stuff along with uh, Jacob Emmons, who's helped out tremendously. Um, then, of course, HP and attack numbers. These are specific to... Uh, no other cards have that and of course the background iconography just to kind of bring it together um, and a little bit more masking and so that's pretty much the entire Hinchling specific stuff right there uh, and then of course the card text is back here in the persistent elements folder where you can edit the card text and there's also these uh, iconography 
Um, so we have a bunch of different icons um, that are here. We have a life and attack bonus pair right here. Uh, I can toggle that on and off. Uh, then we also have the tilt icon. In this particular henchling, actually, uh, we deleted the other layers, but we have, you know, flip, unflip, and uh, eject, and a bunch of different other icons that can appear within the card text. And so those have to be kind of manually positioned um, and sort of lined up with the tilt, which is kind of a pain and has led to, I think, a little bit of discrepancy. I've tried to really make this as, as tight as possible uh, on all the different cards, but you know, mistakes do happen. So anyways, <coughs> excuse me, uh, just getting over being sick. Um, and then we have different artworks down here. And usually each card will only have one art, but this uh, this guy was reused several different times. So we've got uh, the Defective Harp of Healing looks like, um, Legend of a Boomerang, Zoo Monkey, and uh, a couple others, Burrowing Owl. Uh, but usually we just we drag the art in from an external uh, file. Uh, the artists send us the the final proofs, and then we pull the art in and just line it up in here. And then everything is masked out and it's layered out so that it appears within the borders and everything else. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much an overview of the process. Um, or excuse me, I guess just the the template itself, um, the process. Uh, is a little more detailed, but uh, we won't go into that today. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how we lay out uh, Henchling cards. Um, here's another example, a big red button. Um, this one is an item, so it has a couple different fields. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much the layout. So hope you guys enjoyed and hope this was helpful in thinking about how you want to lay out your own cards in a game or if you were just curious kind of how we did it. Um, I will say kind of in closing that Photoshop is not necessarily the best tool for the job. Um, if we if we went through and did this all over again uh, I think for sure we would use uh, Adobe InDesign um, which is similar but it's uh, has much better data driven uh, capabilities and I'll actually pan over here to the card database and you can see here that we've actually got all of our card data in uh, a giant Excel file and uh, so we've got you know many different uh, workbooks for different uh, cards and so forth but this is the base set and it would be just amazing if we could just kind of load directly from this Excel file into Photoshop and have it kind of do the initial pass of laying out the cards filling in the title and the item you know type line and text and so forth and with InDesign that is actually a possibility um, where you can kind of have InDesign do data driven imports and kind of go from there uh, tweaking individual cards instead of laying out every individual uh, component and that's actually really nice for iterative development um, because you you know if you make a bunch of changes if you have to rebalance a mechanic which uh, I had to do many, many times throughout the development of the game where, you know, uh, numbers are just a little bit out of whack or, or we want to change from a, from a, you know, like a 5-5 five, five creature for $2 uh, to a 4-4 four, four creature for $2 uh, or something like that, you know. Having a piece of software that's data-driven that can just regenerate those cards for you can save a ton of time. Um, and in the play testing and debugging cycle. So anyways, uh, I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed the video and uh, definitely let me know in the comments uh, what you think and if you would enjoy uh, more of this. Thanks guys.